I received my Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex order in the mail today. So I believe these launched on September 1st and I ordered them probably the day after on September 2nd. And today is September 7th and I ended up getting these so five days later, which is not bad. I'm pretty sure there is a US distribution center. These orders are pretty quick compared to say Sephora and Nordstrom. So uh, if you're ordering in the US, you'll probably get these pretty quickly. These retail about $29 and she came out with six new shades. And I actually have the five from the original first launch. Here are the five from the original first launch and I'll post up here and down in the description box below my review. And these came out last year. I think I want to say towards the end of the year as well. So I have a full review of these. I love these Lisa Eldridge liquid lyrics formula. And so I'm curious to see how long these actually last for. I, I think the expiration date here says it's six months. Well, it's been over six months and I'm still using these. And so I hope they're okay. It doesn't have any bad smell. It doesn't have any bad smell. And I decided not to get all six because I already have already the original five. And some of these colors did look a little bit similar to me. So I was trying to figure out which ones would look best on my skin tone. I, um, I'm also very curious about the color Daphne, which is kind of the chartreuse green, but we'll see what these look like. So I ended up picking up Azora, Anais, and Iris. So this formula is probably my favorite of the cream liquid uh, shadows. I don't have too many. The only other uh, bottled cream shadows I have are the Sisley ones and this one Chanel from last year's holiday collection. And I did a review of Sisley and initially it was, these were great, but these have worn down really terribly. So these do not last long. It's probably a shelf life of six months as well. And it didn't even last six months. So I actually had created some really beautiful looks with this. They're not as shiny and beaming as the Lisa Eldridge formula. They also didn't have creasing, but what was wrong with it? It started to streak. So I'm keep these on my top shelf to wear and I'm kind of eyeballing to see if they're going to start streaking as well. I love the Chanel one, but I just don't use gold on a daily basis. I have enough liquid eyeshadows. I didn't want to buy all of the ones from Lisa Eldridge because I'm just trying to slow down, slow my roll, I'm trying to slow down on my purchases for makeup of things I'm actually going to use uh, more consistently. I'm so at the end of the day, I'm pretty sweaty. Um, my makeup is um, pretty worn. I did half a makeup and haphazardly did my eye makeup. I actually have a eye quad now with two different colors, but I'll do the swatches. I'll take off the eye makeup and then I'll, and I'll apply the uh, new liquid lorixes on my eyes. Okay, so this is Zora and Zora is described as a rich, deep, sumptuous, cool tone chocolate bronze with an irresistible blend of smoky silver sparkles. I just love this kind of color. This is definitely my wheelhouse of an instant smoky eye. The next liquid Lurex that I ended up getting is Anais, A-N-A-I-S, and it's an antique pewter with sage green undertones, uh, shot with a harmonious blend of silver, pale pink, and gold glittery pearls. And then the last eyeshadow I got was Iris. Iris is a playful smoky amethyst with a subtle sheeny finish. Contrasting violet and fuchsia pearls give this shade a gentle duo chrome effect. I've actually been in a moving car, my partner was driving, and I didn't have tools other than the actual applicator and then my fingers. And I actually was able to do a look without any other shadow. So these are definitely great one and dones. I am very attuned and sensitive to creasing because I have hooded lids plus sprinkles. So I would have to say that these have not creased on me. For me, the always rule of thumb with hooded lids and creasing is just not to put too much as well. So even when I've built up this product, it has not creased on me. So I'll go ahead and do swatches on my arm of the original formula. So this one is Liza. It's like a smoky gray. This next one is Angelica. And Angelica is probably my most used and, and favorite uh, out of all these liquid lurkses. 
The next one is Bianca. The next one is Diana. And the last one I have is Lauren. And again, this Angelica one is the one I use the most. It's really kind of an everyday one. And I also mix it with that. I've also used this every day. I find these two are best in the summer for me just because they're so much warm tone colors. And this one I've used just uh, on occasion of a smoky eye. So I'm looking for ones to actually replace, in a way, the Sicily ones, these ones that were kind of a dud for me. These ended up being really nice at the beginning and they're just streaky. So I ended up tossing the green one, which was the most problematic one. Again, it was fine for probably the first month. And then after two months, I opened it again and tried to use it for on my eyes. And it was so streaky. I just was so disappointed because these were incredibly expensive. I think these were like $60 compared to this, the $29 of the Lisa Eldridge. So let me do a comparison of these this is number five and i don't remember the name i'll look at it below so this is number five five for sisley so you can see it's much more sheer and you can see it's really streaky and that might be fine for people who don't want a lot of impact but it's actually gotten worse i remember doing swatches of these when i got these at the beginning and these just are not performing as well so uh I'm just really disappointed in the quality of, of this Sisley product. This is number four. And you can just see that it just, if, you know, to save you money, I Sisley has been really disappointing to me in terms of their makeup lately. I love their skincare, but I mean, hands down, you can see that it's just incredibly streaky and how it goes in the eyes is really streaky versus this. It's like, you saw how beautifully these swatched. The last one I have is the from the holiday collection and that's the ombre premier lac 27 or ombre and i'm going to put it right over here because it's similar it's very gold looking i just don't like the applicator on the chanel one as much i think it's really pretty it's just not as pigmented as the lisa eldridge and once i tried the lisa eldridge formula i just didn't want to go back so this was like the only liquid eyeshadow i've tried from chanel and so I haven't bought any more just because I love the formula of Lisa Eldridge. So we're going to start with Anais, which is the lightest one right here. And so I freshened up my face, I put powdered some down, I removed the eye makeup, and I have the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Affair lipstick and gloss on, on top. This is my favorite kind of nude uh, combination out of the Lisa Eldridge lipstick collection. And so what I think I'll do is show you what it looks like if I maybe just use this without any tools. And just as a heads up, I actually have a little breakout on my <laughs> eyelids. So just the texture, it's not because of the product, it's actually my skin is peeling right there. So what I'm gonna do is actually just kind of swipe that on here. And then I'm actually just gonna use my fingers because on the video, if you've seen her, you, she actually uses her fingers and it's actually true. I've been in a bind where I'm in the car and I have not used uh, brushes. I just use my fingers and it does dry down. There's some work time, but it does dry down fairly quickly. So I'm going to turn off this vanity light to see so you can see some of that. That's so pretty. And because I'm wearing olive, the olive tones, the green tones are coming out on this product more. It's beautiful. It's actually, it's not as translating as well on the camera of how pretty it is. So I'm going to see what I'm going to do one more is I'm actually going to go 
um, one more round, one more layer, just to build it up. And I'm gonna go again with my fingers. And with liquid shadows, you wanna work pretty quickly. You do have some time again. I've had other products where you, there's not much wiggle room. And yeah, that's, God, that's so pretty. Oh, I'm so glad I got this color because this is definitely more in my wheelhouse. It's like this taupe of a green in it. It's got some, I can see silver and gold flecks. And I don't know, I don't know if it's looking, it's looking maybe warm because I'm wearing um, this tank top and jewelry. And I'm wondering if I were wearing a cool um, color scheme, if it would look actually uh, cooler. So that is Anais, A-N-I-S. The next one I'm going to use is the color Zora. So this is the one that's more brown. I'm actually gonna take a rougher 01 brush. And what I'm gonna do actually is, okay, I'm just gonna put it on my lid and then spread it around. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do because I don't wanna spread any more because I like the pigmentation I have on the mobile lid, but I'm taking more. I took more from the actual applicator and I went in and now I'm just kind of putting more in my crease. Oop, that's, that's a lot. So let's see if I can bring it in, chill it out. I feel like I'm having a Bob Ross moment of like, no mistakes, just happy accidents. So I guess we're going smoky on this. Okay, so that is the color Zora. It's really smoky. I didn't mean to make it that smoky, but I'm wondering also if I could just make it less smoky for more of a daytime look. Um, let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Just grabbing a wipe. I have one here, but I would either take a wipe or, um, ooh, I kind of like that. It makes it like really edgy. It's like very clean, like cut. I'm grabbing a rougher 02 brush and I'm going into that Zora product again and just the tip. I can brush some there and then dabbing it a little bit because I don't want too much. And then I'm going to run it here. I should have stuck with my instinct of using the rougher zero two brush because I think that would have been better. It would have been precise. So I'm just kind of smoking it out. I think this would be beautiful with fake eyelashes for an evening look. This is definitely more daytime look. This is an evening look. So this color reminds me a lot of the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster Tea Rose. So I'm gonna pull that out, which is this one here. And I'm seeing flecks of like a chocolate brown, maybe some, maybe some red in here. So it's that color here. Okay, I don't think it's an exact dupe. It's very similar though, similar vibe. This is a little bit more burgundy. There's red in there. And then I also have the Marc Jacobs Topaz Flash in 90. It's the sequins. I don't know if they make these anymore. It's also kind of the similar concept as Victoria Beckham has a lid. It's super pigmented. You see that? And it's also like just kind of like a one and done. Zora, and that's Anais. Uh, at least for this look, I'm actually liking this one better just because I think it's more versatile. What I'm gonna do is actually take this off and reapply it to see if I can make it more of a daytime friendly look. Taking a rougher 02 brush, a clean one. It's got this flat edge and I find like these are great for building up color. So just 
taking that and keeping it pretty close to my mobile lid. And then you can stop there because otherwise it's going to get more smoky. And I just want to make it more of like a realistic wearable daytime look. And I'm flipping the brush just to buff out the edges because you don't want like a clear line of demarcation. Just take the edges to buff them out so there's like a nice transition. You see that? Okay, so what I can tell you already that I'm seeing definitely more fallout with Zora than Anais, if that matters to you. I have not found this formula to bother my eyes. And I'm grabbing Velvet Blush. And then I'm grabbing the Velvet Blush lip gloss that I have just to cool it down a little bit and brighten it up a little bit. Again, this is Anais, really beautiful. And this is Zora. So I'm gonna take these off and then do my final look with Iris. And I want to try something I saw Lisa Eldridge do, which she, t she took uh, Iris because it's such a bright color and she used it as liner. So here again is Iris. I'm taking a rougher 23 brush, it's a pencil brush. And these goat hair brushes are so great for cream shadows because they can handle the cream product. And of course, if you bring it up more, it's gonna be more smoky, but I just think this is such a beautiful color. Such a fun color. It is so bright and vibrant. It just really translates really well as a liner. And again, this is a first impression, so I can't speak to at least the longevity of at least Iris as a liner. And if I have any updates, I always pin it in the comments below. So I just winged it out a little bit. So for those of you who are kind of a little afraid of using bright colors, this is an easy way to start experimenting is taking this bright color and just using it using it as a liner. Again, it's pretty pigmented, so I like to just tap it a little bit. So less is more, you can always build up. And when I saw this purple, I was like, yes, I just, I'm so excited. Like she just does color so beautifully with her lipsticks and when I saw this kind of purple, it's like a grape purple, I was just so excited to to get this. So going into the other eye again, just kind of using it as liner, using the same pencil brush from Refer, and just connecting the two. And then you can see with adding this at the bottom, it starts to be like a more dramatic look. You see what this looks like as then liner and then me using it at the bottom. You can see how versatile this product, product is. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue to smoke it out. So I'm dragging the product a little bit under now. I think I dragged this deeper one underneath and it just gets a little bit dodgy because it's, a, it's this kind of like, yes, it's a liquid formula and it does dry down, but it can, if you put too much, it can start to irritate the eyes. So I can see some of the griddle, gl glitter fallout already. So it could be that. I think I'm going to take the same product. I haven't dipped it in yet. Again, this is like the same from the same initial, like, um, remo like first, re you know, first taking it out. I haven't gone in and gotten more product. So I'm grabbing a Wayne Goss Zero, uh, Wayne Goss 20 brush. And I put some on my hand and I'm just going to swirl some on there, start to smoke out the look.
Yeah, this is when that way, um, rougher zero two brush is like much better. I just pr prefer that for more precise placement. Luckily, I have another backup of it. I think I have three of these. Uh, again, taking that uh, zero wing wing off zero two brush. I think a little bit has dried. So again, I'm just gonna take some from here. In some ways, it's the easiest, so I don't have to get stuff on my hand, and then just apply the product. So it's not such a stark contrast, just taking the product that's already there and kind of pulling it out a little bit. Compared to Zora, there was definitely more give on the product to smudge it out, but this definitely kind of, it's definitely um, more pigmented. But I'm not surprised, like purples tend to be a little bit fussier. Just go slow, build slowly, take your time. And because it's so pigmented, it's not as easy as effortless as the other colors. So that Inace color, it was so easy to use. It was kind of like idiot proof. I mean, I could see myself using that in the car and like just putting on my makeup. This, I don't think I would use in the car. Like with the, <laughs> the car moving and because it's so pigmented, I would get really nervous. So my recommendation is that if you're gonna use like the darker colors, take your time with these because these are very smoky. A little goes a long way. And this is what I love the, about this formula, the versatility of it. Whereas like these ones, I don't mind taking these in a car, using my finger, just because they're kind of idiot proof in smudging them out. But I have found like the ones that are super pigmented, like these three, uh, definitely take your time, use a brush. Okay, so I'm gonna finish here that this is my final look. I'm trying to bring this up a little bit because what I like to do with my hooded lids because I don't you can't see so much of it unless I close my eyes I like to bring it up a little bit so that is the final look I'm gonna put my hair down it's definitely really vampy I don't know if I would use this every day I think for like an event or a special occasion I might do it um, like an event if I wanted a more editorial look. I think with this, I wouldn't put it underneath. I think I would, again, just put use it as a liner or just use a delicate number, like just use it really carefully. It's not for the faint of heart is what I would say. I hope this review was helpful. And again, I'll link up my review of the original five that came out last year. I would say that, that, you know, this last look is just definitely a look. It's not for everybody, but if I think if you're somebody who loves the color purple, that this is a fun one to get. It's definitely a, a bit more editorial. It reminds me a little bit of Danessa Myrick's vibes. It, I just, this is, it's like this one, Lightworks Volume 1, which was limited edition and it didn't get released again. So Galaxy up here, that's Martian. It's like a multi-chrome. Yeah, let's go into this one, Galaxy. I'm kind of curious what this one looks like. I just add it. Just adds a really cool blue shift. So I was not planning on doing a Danessa Myricks Lisa Eldridge mashup, but the color of this purple is just so pretty. I think it just it can be alone. You don't need this, but I think why not? Because I have this Lightworks palette. So that's Galaxy on top of that Lisa Eldridge Iris. And then I'm grabbing this Aurora, this multi-chrome down there. It's like green. It's got greens, maybe yellow and purple. Yes, this is beautiful, Aurora so pretty i mean just talking about amping up amping up what you have there every moon this it's supposed to be a highlighter but i like to use it as an inner corner highlight blue moon here this one here i'm cleaning off the brush there we go 
This palette might have been like one of my favorite palettes of last year. I was so surprised. I'm so glad I did not sleep on it. And knowing, knowing now I know knowing what she shells in these Lightworks palette, I will be picking up that new Lightworks palette. So again, here is Iris and that is that duochrome from uh, from Danessa Meyerson over here. And I'll put in the description box what I use. So that is my final look. Do you need all of these? No, I think uh, if you any of these colors resonate with you, go ahead and pick them up. I think for $29, it's such a good deal. They're my favorite liquid eyeshadows just because of the, her color schemes and they just, the colors they pop. So I'm just a fan of her liquid lurexes. It's a shame that these only last, the, there's an expiration life of these that say that they're six months. And that could just be an industry standard because it is liquid. So that's something to note that if it bothers you, if the expiration date is pretty short, just know that. And I, I know some people can push the envelope of how long they keep their products. You know, here I am almost 12 months later and I still have the originals. So I'm going to stop, you know, that's the downside of why I don't like to buy too many of liquid eyeshadows is that they do have a shorter shelf life, just like cream products. So just something to be aware of, or, or I still love powders more just because they do last longer. But, um, you know, I think these are really beautiful, really beautiful to just add to your kit to play with. And, you know, you can play, you can use these as base. What I found is that what I love about these um, liquid lurks or cream or liquid eyeshadows is that they can be great, uh, builders of other uh colors in my collection like if you have like say a cleona which i'm like ooh, do i have cleona i come in here's one i have that i don't rust out too much but here i'll put that here see my you know things that you can just put like pull out in your collection and i don't know what color that is don't ask me because i don't want to take that out um or i have another i put sometimes like they clean the cleona um pans by the way do fit into the Vizzy Art Pan. So I have these Cleona colors, so pretty. And I think these are kind of like the OGs that people talk about in terms of like, they did it first before Danessa Myricks. So uh, if you want to look at those, I just find that they're really crumbly, whereas Danessa Myricks, that Lightworks formula, they're smooth. They're so smooth and creamy. And as, as pretty as Cleona is, is it's very, it just kind of falls apart really easily and it's very crumbly. I don't like that fallout from Cleona, but maybe others have a different experience than I do. Um, I hope you found that review helpful. Again, that was the first impressions. Let me know if you have any questions below. Did you pick up any of these liquid lurexes? I'm curious if you have any of them from the old launch. Um, are you interested in picking up any of the new ones? And if so, which ones and how you're experiencing them? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to join the Mickey Carr Beauty Fam. You can go comment and like below and click on my channel to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos I upload. And as always, please be very kind to yourself and others and just be you. Take good care. Bye, B fam.